Ken Akamatsu, the author, or mangaka if you prefer, of Love Hina has been elected to the upper house in Japan, where he will now sit for six years as his party, the Liberal Democrats Party, has won a massive supermajority, allowing them to do practically whatever they want for the upcoming six years, that is the period that upper house representatives are elected for in Japan. Why is this a big deal? Because Ken Akamatsu is a strident anti-feminist and anti-wokist. He is of the opinion that Japanese culture, in his case particularly manga and anime, is under attack from, well, I hardly need to tell you do I? feminism, censorship, the usual crap we're currently dealing with over here in the West, and has slowly over the years been creeping into Japan ever so slowly and maliciously. There has been a great deal of resistance towards it, however, because, well, for them, manga and anime, oh, it is simply a larger, more accepted part of their social infrastructure. Over here, comics and gaming etc, it has only relatively recently become, hell, forget popular, socially acceptable even. I was bullied as a kid for playing video games, whereas in Japan, hell, they have anime characters as national ambassadors. It's quite different, and many have predicted that Japan would undoubtedly fold, much like the West had, to the slow and warping influence of wokeism and, hey, might still happen, but this is absolutely a very important first step. So Ken Akimatsu here is um, unapologetically weebish, as you can see from his official page here. <laughs> it is very Japanese. In fact, one of his initial promises was to set up a free manga website, I'll leave a link to that uh, down in the description below, where legacy manga that is no longer in print will be available for free for anyone who wishes to read it, with all of the, uh, the revenue coming from advertisement going directly to the authors, which is not only a really cool thing, but also it is a way to actually, well, preserve Japanese culture in the form of manga here. And, well, it does need preserving. Just to give you a quick example of what I'm talking about over here in the West, once upon a time, Marvel used to run this. Conan. <laughs> Look at this shit. This, this is awesome. In fact, Conan had a ridiculously long run in Marvel 300 odd issues, I think. It was massive, and it is, well, it's it's Conan. If you don't know what Conan is, you've missed out. It is the most archetypically masculine hero you've ever seen. And yet today, this is Marvel. This is Marvel. This is Marvel. We can't even see the mountain anymore, that's how far we have fallen. Ken Akutumaksu has also announced his win on Twitter, of course, and his party, the uh, LDP, has won now, as mentioned, a super majority. Out of the 125 upper house seats, they now hold 75 along with their coalition partner, partner, partner which is Kometo. Now, to be fair, the LDP uh, do not have a perfect track record when it comes to fighting wokeism as most established parties. They, um, they've got a little bit of shaky backstory here and there, but Ken Akamatsu has been a tremendous transforming influence on the party, and I hope he will continue to be so, as, well, here's the thing. You could absolutely argue that this supermajority is in large part due to the recent assassination of, um, of Abe, the, um, oh, Shinosaki? Uh, Shinzo, excuse me, Shinzo Abe, who was a previous member and leader of the party. But it was a quick turnaround. Did it have an effect? Probably. Was it enough to clinch it? 
I think this probably has more to do with their actual policy position, which is the protection of Japanese culture, which is very, 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 very important, as is, is the very first bastion to prevent what is happening over here in the West to happening to Japan. Again, though, this, I also want to say, as positive as I view this, and make no mistake, this is very, very good, we have no guarantee that it's actually going to work out well, as the caveat I usually throw in, like for example when I was talking about Elon Musk buying Twitter, that turned out to be a big fat nothing, and as I mentioned even back then, I was far from convinced that it wasn't simply a PR move, and I am most certainly not convinced it was more than a PR move now. Shinzo Shinzo See, now, now I'm screwing up their names. Ken Akimatsu, there we go. He has made many pledges, and I do believe he genuinely believes and feels these things as well. And I think he'll probably try his best, but he is one out of 125 members now. And even if his party has a super majority, well, whether or not he'll be able to get enough of the other people along with him to really make a difference... We're just gonna have to wait and see, but I certainly do hope that this is going to be, uh, well, more of a firebrand than, oh, say, the recently deposed Boris Johnson, for example, who said all the right things heading into office and then did diddly dick nothing when he got into office. Now, of course, different office, etc., but you can even level this criticism against the Trump Falafagus as well. The Trump Falafagus said a lot of really good and nice sounding things. He was going to deal with the media. He called them the enemy of the people. He was going to set things straight. And, well, whilst he did achieve some things, he too was seduced by the siren call. He talked about how he would get phone calls from social media directors licking his ass, tossing his salad most vociferously. And he bought into the flatter, and the moment it seemed like he was losing a grip, he was gone. Will the same thing happen to Ken Akamatsu here? Entirely possible, but I certainly hope not. If Japan manages to establish itself as a shining example of anti-wokeism, it might finally be something that we can see more openly on the world stage, because, well, here's the thing. Marvel built their brand of stuff like this, of Superman. They didn't build it of, oh, this. And if anything, they are rapidly destroying their brands with this. And as the anime and manga industry continues to go from victory to victory, rising from power to power, it's uh, allowed to hope that maybe the lesson will sink in at some point. What happens in Japan will have um, knock-on effects across the rest of the world. Not just necessarily in anime and manga too, mind you, because, well, is there? One of the big uh, points of the party, the LDP, is to remilitarize Japan, <laughs> which sounds a bit more aggressive than it necessarily is, because you see, theoretically speaking, technically speaking, Japan does not actually have an army. They have a self-defense force, the Japanese self-defense force, or the JSDF, or, um, uh, what was the term? It's fallen from my head now. Um, nope, completely forgotten it. Ah, Jietai, that was it. Sorry, took me a moment. See, I'm try I'm thinking now in English, Norwegian, and Japanese at the same time, and it's frying my brain, okay? I have an excuse. Personally, I don't really think there's an issue. I really genuinely don't. Japan was entirely demobilized until... what? Not demobilized, demilitarized, more correctly, until the early 1950s, 1950. Three, I want to say, or so, when they were actually allowed to have an army again, or well, army, a self-defense force. And ever since, they have had this relatively small, relatively poorly equipped, and relatively poorly funded self-defense force that has also been placed under a great deal of pretty stringent restrictions. Whereas now, in a world with China on the rise, well, frankly, it makes a lot of sense for Japan to be allowed to remilitarize, and hell, they've remilitarized, to build an army, something every other nation has frankly. And, I mean, what's the danger? Are they suddenly going to go like, yes, Tenno Heka Banzai? 
and invade Japan or Korea again? Somehow I doubt it. The whole thing about Japan in the actual Imperial Age of Japan, Tenno Eka, Banzai, etc., the Japanese people were very different at the time, and uh, I very much so doubt we will return to that period any time soon, so I don't see any problem with it. Uh, then again, if the rising sun is waving over Korea in the next two decades, feel free to call me out on this. But until that happens, I view this as a near universal good, and um, I wish Ken Kamatsu all the best in his career in politics. Oh, you thought the uh, world of professional manga was treacherous? Hmm. Well, I'm sure you'll love this. It'll certainly be a harem show of uh, of a sort, uh, a gangbang maybe even. I just hope you won't be on the receiving end of it. Till next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.